Greetings, grace and peace and blessings. What's up? Hope everyone's having an iry chilling day. Uh, got off work, came home and meditated, and got some confirmation on uh, what the Spirit wants me to talk about. It's uh, God's buried treasure, and you know the fact that we are His treasures. So I want to read you Matthew thirteen forty four, and it's the parable of the hidden treasure. And it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that was hidden in a field, which a man found, and and then once he found it, like, he like dug it up, then he hid it again. And, you know, for his joy over it, he sells all of the stuff he has to buy that field so that he can get that treasure. Pretty honest, you know, he could <laughs> But, and so, what God is trying to really show us here, we need like a backstory. So, uh, you know, it says that God planted a garden in Eden. And then he created man and he put man in the garden. So then uh, God gives Adam, his helper comparable to him, Eve. And, you know, they're now in this world as aliens. They're like, well, what do we do? So God gives them the deeds of the earth. And he says, you know, the, this, is, this is all the things you need to do. And basically the serpent of old, he uh, tricked Eve into uh, giving up the rights and breaking the rules. And... Uh, forfeiting the deed of the earth if you've seen Narnia you know that the the white witch or she could be like you know she represents Satan and she tricked uh, the younger brother into selling out his brothers and sisters for some sweets and treats you know like like the fruit that he offered Eve and you know the white witch was like okay well he broke the rule so his soul is mine so that's uh, the same way with the Old Covenant, that when you broke a law, you had to offer up a sacrifice, uh, or else your, your, you know, your sin would keep you um, from God and from forgiveness. So there's no remission of sin without the shedding of blood, and we know that from the Old Testament and the Old Covenant, and you know, they'd have to sacrifice goats, and, and you know, the priests did it, I think, once a year. Um, but so under the New Covenant, uh, that's Jesus' blood. He paid the price, like the lion in the movie, uh, but he's the lion of Judah, the conquering, you know, he's the lion of the conquering tribe of, of Judah. And he, he basically gave up his life for us and shed his blood and bought back the earth. And he actually descended into hell and got the keys from the devil and puts it under his feet. So we do not have to die any longer and we don't have to be guilty of our sins and the accuser uh, accuses us, but we are found guiltless. So through Adam and Eve, death was released out into the world and then through Jesus, we're given life and life more abundantly. You know, he gave us because we had sold out to the devil. And so he bought back the field. So that's the whole, what the whole parable is about is that God had made this this field and you know he has treasure in it and he found the treasure but he hid it and then he went and he made a whole plan to buy the field back uh and because we're his treasures we're his buried treasures and god showed me that, uh when i was first uh started walking with him that you know i'm going to show you people's treasures they have inside and the gifts that i i put there and to put and put inside of them and so it's pretty pretty cool to be old in people because anybody can find the dirt you know and that's that's comes from uh, Pro proverbs eleven twenty seven, and so you know he we're, we're jaws jewels you know like jehovah and his nickname's jaw so we're jaws jewels we actually mean so much to him that he gave everything he has to buy us back and we're bought with the price. Even every single hair on our head is numbered. I know I got a lot of hair right now. <laughs> and it's all numbered by God. He knows me. He knows everything about me. He created me. He created you and he loves us and we're his hidden treasures. And so we, uh, once you wake up and God like has mined you out of the field, you are supposed to, you know, strengthen your brothers and sisters because you, you get saved, you get pulled out, you're getting shined up, you're getting turned into a diamond and then you're supposed to reflect out to your brothers and sisters and so we're treasure hunters we're like god's pirates we can go out and and find people and tell them about the good news and so i want to share a story when i first started going to you are the church it was awesome because i started watching uh the finger of god movie and i saw that the ministry students were um doing treasure hunts so i was like talking to uh one of my mentors at the church and was like oh man i saw this cool thing how they're doing treasure hunts and stuff and she's like oh what we do that here you should come and we do it all 
on Fridays and I'm like what so I go there Friday and we get these little sheets of paper and it says like oh uh do you, you just meditate and you talk to in your brain it's really crazy so mine was like diamond but I got that tattooed so I'm like uh am I really thinking diamond or just ah, do I love diamonds you know and then I got like black outfit and, and those lines and then when we all come together and we compare notes because we do this like separately uh i saw like one of the other ladies mama debbie she was uh you know she had black outfit and diamond as well so we're like oh, okay we're onto something here we're all stoked and we're like okay let's go to the mall like we got walmart and we got a couple other places so we started there and then um we were like walking through the mall, just like kind of asking people to pray for them. But you know, some people have the wrong idea about prayer. Like I also did because I had been so beat up by like religious people who would come up to me and try to give me a Bible or be like, God, God will help you because they saw that I was gay or whatever. And they're just like kind of doing it like passive aggressively. So I kind of even had like a weird thing about prayer too. So I understand it. And uh, but like we all need prayer and we all need a touch from God all the time. No matter how long you've been walking with God, you still need God. And <laughs> that's the good news. So we're walking and we see this diamond and I'm like, hey guys, look, there's a diamond because it was a jeweler store. Then this girl walks by, I'm not kidding, she's in an all black outfit and I'm like, all right, be bold. So I like look at her, I'm like, hey, this can sound really weird, but check out my paper right here. We're on a treasure hunt and I think you're my treasure that I'm supposed to find, you know, because you have a black outfit and look, there's a diamond. And she's like, oh, okay. And I'm like, can we pray for you for anything? And right away she's like, um, well, I'm an atheist, uh, but you can pray for my girlfriend. She just found out that she has ground mall seizures. And um, without missing a beat, my mentor, Janine, shout out to you, love you. Uh, she goes, you know what? My ex-girlfriend had, had the same thing. Let me pray, let, well, let's pray for you right now without missing a beat or anything. So we just start praying and oh man, the presence fell and Debbie uh, got a word for her and, and knew that she like had been saved, uh, like really in the physical and um, you know that that her and her girlfriend like she both had a word for them and so after the prayer was done it was like whoa okay like you, you can't deny that you felt the spirit and she like looked at us and she she was like you know what god saved me for a reason i almost drowned when i was younger and my girlfriend's the one who saved me and i know he saved me for a reason now so that didn't sound like an atheist no more to me and then she even wanted to and right away she even got like so stoked on it she was like trying to follow us around the mall which is so scriptural when jesus would heal people and touch people they just wanted to follow him after that and he's like no just go off and tell people what happened <laughs> like well some people he's like be quiet because he's trying to reveal and conceal his identity at the same time which is so god he's such a paradox um but anyway so it's like i you know i, I remember the story of the eunuch and and nobody ever asked, no one asked questions of what his lifestyle was like they just prayed for him baptized him cares about the other stuff like people need to get touched from God and you know this girl's life was changed because of a treasure hunt that we went on and and that God sent us on you know God's doing it all God if you ask him to show you who needs the prayer he he will and he will he will lead you to the right people this stuff is it's not a game it's people's lives out here you know so we need to take it seriously and be treasure hunters and go out and and speak the good news to people that no matter who you are no matter what you're you're doing god loves you she